I spent $200 to test out ChatGPT's new AI agent called the Operator so that you don't have to. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the pros, the cons, what you need to know in the TLDR of ChatGPT's new agent. So at the core of it, what this Operator agent is, it's a browser-based agent where I can essentially type something in like book a table for two at a French bistro tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And it's gonna go. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to pull up this, you know, virtual machine, this window, essentially a browser, and it's going to start taking actions for me. So it's going to type in, you know, opentable.com. It's going to, you know, look for restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, it's pretty, pretty dang good. Uh, we saw Claude release Claude computer use Google release project Mariner, or at least uh, demo it. We can see that every big AI lab is pushing towards agentic AI. And I think that this is a huge step towards that. Um, but it's, I don't think it's worth $200. It is, it's not that good. It makes mistakes. You have to babysit it and handhold it all the way. Um, similarly to Claude's model, to Google's model, to third party models that we've talked about on this channel, do browser. And, um, but I think the, the thing to understand here is that not that like, this isn't good enough yet, but that this is where everything in the AI space is heading. It's we're heading towards an agentic AI future where we have AIs that can take actions on our behalf. If you look here, it's figuring out what to do, navigating to open table, selecting reservation date, updating time. And so all of the, you know, complex button clicking that happens at entry level knowledge work jobs right now are like on the chopping block essentially. And no, I think what this means, I think what you should take away from this is that um, in order to become irreplaceable in the AI age, a few things need to be the case. First, you need to understand AI agents and how they work and how to use them. Second, you need to be a very strategic thinker, right? If your entire job is just following SOPs and clicking buttons, then you're on the chopping block. But if you understand how to do strategy, like if I'm, you know, a marketing professional, and I understand like, okay, the strategy of why a campaign works and doesn't and how to set up and test business ideas and you know how to create, how to actually execute on these strategies, how to create the project management system to see this through to the end. You know, there's so many different aspects of knowledge work. And if you understand how to do that, the strategy, then the actual execution and implementation, which is usually done by entry level workers is now just done you know, by an agent. And so the roles that everyone is going to transition towards are the roles that require you to, you know, think on a higher order level and not just follow orders, right? Um, I truly believe that, you know, over the last like two decades, a lot of the jobs have shifted towards machine-like, robot-like jobs. And so if you're in a job, if you're currently doing stuff that is like very monotonous, you're doing the same thing every day, you're copying and pasting things, then the kind of the ask here, what I think the transition is that we're being asked to go through is you need to learn how to actually do the job of a strategist rather than just an operator. Because as we can see, you're going to have AI operators to actually just execute on your ideas for you. And ideas will be the new oil. Ideas are the thing that will be most valuable. Um, and so let's look at the result here. I found a great option for your romantic uh, French bistro dinner, rated 4.8 stars, 31 to $50, available at 8 p.m. So boom, it basically just, you know, did all this research for me. If I look at, um, if I look at all these different tasks, it literally did all these. Different, so if you think of like O1 as like the reasoning model of ChatGPT, this is essentially O1 on steroids, right? It's doing all of these tasks. It's deselecting, it's clicking. And so essentially how this works is it's literally just taking screenshots of this virtual machine's browser. It's just like going here, it's taking a screenshot, it's figuring out what to click, and then it's saying, okay, click there. And then it's figuring out where to type something and it's clicking and it's typing all based on screenshots. Um, and so at the moment, this is you know a $200 model, it's only available in the US, but ChatGPT has already agreed that they, or, or mentioned that they're going to release this to you know team plans, uh, plus plans, and in the less expensive models. And ideally over time, this is gonna be free for everyone. 
Um, and so if I were you, I would not spend $200 now to start testing this out, but I would just get ready for this transition to happen and start thinking five steps ahead of how could I use operators like this and agents like this in order to, you know, do all the tasks that I'm doing on a day to day basis. Like if I had to do, if I didn't have to do any monotonous tasks for my job, how would I think, what would I use my time to do? How strategic and, you know, higher order could I approach my job in? Or, or yeah, like what are the different, you know, higher order decisions that I could make such that I'm not just being a button clicker all day. And this is why I'm excited about agents and excited about operator and all of these different um, AI labs and what they're doing is because it's going to, if you relate to this transition in a positive way, you can actually use this to have more agency over your life. You're, you're not spending all of your time doing all of the meaningless stuff that is, you know, endemic to the knowledge work world, but you're actually spending your time figuring out what is important to do. And that's why I really believe that like in order to use operator well, in order to use any of these AI agents well, you have to understand yourself. You have to understand what it is, what direction are you moving in? Uh, and what are your goals? You have to have clarity, right? And so at the, at the end of the day, agents will in AI in general will only um, amplify what's already there. And if you're, if you have hyper clarity, hyper direction, hyper purpose, operator will be your secret weapon. But if you don't know what to do, you don't know why you're doing it, then you're, this is just going to amplify the amount of confusion and overwhelm that you have. Um, and so with all that being said, there's a lot of potential use cases here. One of the ones I'm most excited about is actually being able to do customer research or just research in general. And so if I say like summarize the top political headlines for today in the Atlantic, it's going to go to the Atlantic and do that. But imagine if you were like in some knowledge work job and you were basically saying, go do competitive research for me on the top competitors of my company and write and summarize it into a one pager and give me the key takeaways at the end. Or, you know, maybe you ask it to, I'm trying to reach out to people like this that I want to work with. Go find me a thousand people online that fit this criteria and write them custom messages. This is something that, um, I've already built out for some clients, but the current build outs have been so custom and have required like understanding how to use various tools. The, the shift here and why like kind of all of the AI labs are shifting towards agentic browser based agents or, uh, systems is because rather than us having to build like a fully custom solution, which I think will still be valuable. It's not going to make that less valuable, but I think rather than having to build it out now, the average consumer can use an agent. They can just type something into to the operator and have it start doing stuff. And so at the end of the day, prompt engineering is still going to be an extremely valuable skill in being able to under, being able to operate agents and understand and strategize about how to use those agents is going to be extremely valuable. I um, mean, being able to like figure out what are the actual use cases and how do you prompt engineer to get those specific use cases? That's what's going to be most valuable. Um, and so if we're just watching this run in the background, it's just clicking buttons. Um, it's summarizing headlines. It's doing all these things. Um, so it's going to, um, it's going to the political news in the Atlantic. Um, and it's today's top headlines include Trump's pardon, government officials, vaccine, RFK stuff. And so what if I said like, give me the TL, DR of the top three articles in paragraph format. Let's see if it can do that. So now it's going here and it is scrolling to the top. And so another, another picture I want to paint for you is Imagine if you had 10 of these agents working at the same time doing different tasks, right? Like I can leave this, let's say I like go and I'm like doing something else on my computer. I'm, you know, building different systems. The agent, the operator agent is still running in the background. It's still doing tasks for me. Like it doesn't stop when I leave the browser. So imagine if, you know, uh, potentially over time, 
Um, OpenAI has mentioned that they're going to release an API for this. So imagine I'm like building out a, a system inside of like an automation system inside of make.com. What I could do is like on a, you know, let's say I do something like this. Um, OpenAI. Let's say like I connect to their API, make an API call here. And then I say like once a day, you know, it's not saved yet save anyway and I go like every single day at whatever o'clock I basically say like run this agent and I can like systematize and and productize these specific outcomes that I'm going after so maybe I want to you know do some analytics reporting I'm running a bunch of social media campaigns I want to understand if they're working or not every single Friday I say go out get all this data from all these different sources and structure it in a spreadsheet in this format. And then I could schedule it out like this. And then every single Friday, and then I could say like, whenever you finished, you know, send me an email and maybe I'm still building it out a little bit custom, but the vast majority of the work, rather than me having to, you know, create a bunch of API calls and set up, you know, all these different modules in the system, I can just have one module that does it all. And then I'm like, okay, like add it into a spreadsheet and send me an email with the response. And then every single Friday I get an email with, here's the exact analytics you were looking for um, in the exact format you were looking for. And it just sent me an email. This is just one use case. There's obviously a lot of other use cases here, um, but let's see what it did. Okay, so it found the top three articles, January Sixers, Trump's first shot um, in deep state, the animal story that RFK should know. And so it just found me some news here. I typically would not read these types of articles, um, but you can see the benefit or like the potential use case here of actually do, going out and doing the research and discovering things for you that otherwise you would have to have gone to this website, scrolled through it, copied and pasted this into ChatGPT, asked it to summarize for you, copy and paste that into a Google Doc. Now I can just say like, I wonder if we could go meta on this and say like, um, ask chat, GPT, um, ask, have chat GPT write an article based on these summaries. I've never tried this before, so we'll see if it's actually able to access its own product. Um, yeah, ask, so it says it's copyright, so ask chat GPT to write an article about the current state of affairs of the USA. Let's ask it, can you access ChatGPT? So imagine an agent that could go into ChatGPT and prompt itself and go do things. So it looks like it doesn't. So we're not quite there yet, but yeah, I hope you found this exciting, interesting. Um, and yeah, the TLDR is don't buy it, but keep an eye out and understand that being able to use agents is going to be one of the top skills you're going to need to understand in the next two, three, five, ten years. Um, and so in order to become irreplaceable, in order to become extremely valuable and thrive in the AI age, this is one of the key skills that you're going to want to learn. Um, and so that's it for today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and ciao.